So I'm very happy that uh, Professor Eric Moulin from Ecole Polytechnique uh, uh, decided to join our seminar series at TII. As you know, it's uh, a set of, a, of, uh, of series of, of seminars that we do on the artificial intelligence topic every two weeks, bringing top researchers around the world. And so Professor Eric Moulin is one of them. He's been working uh, for many years in the field at the interconnection of speech recognition, machine learning, AI, signal processing. And recently he's been working intensively on basically different approaches related to uncertainty quantification and also Bayesian approach for machine learning. Uh, today, he's giving a talk of uh, some recent work he's been doing with many colleagues. He talked about it on the topic of invertible flow non-equilibrium sampling, neo estimation. The topic is, is quite hot at the moment, as you all know, especially in the realm of explainable AI and being able to provide some kind of, of accuracy of the results that we have. And I'm all the more very happy that he's given the talk because he's also a good friend of mine and we've been also collaborating since many years. So, uh, Eric, the floor is yours. I mean, of course, I can give much more details on his CVs, on the fact that he's a member of the French Academy of Science. And recently, he's been also uh, appointed knight. He's a, he's, a, he's a knight, which which is a great thing, what we call a chevalier. And congratulations <laughs> again, Eric, for, for this uh, recognition from the from Thanks the, a lot, to everyone. It's it's a pleasure to be there. So I am, actually, I am in Moscow, so it's very, very cold there. So it's snowing. So it's funny to, that you I give a seminar in a place where the weather is very mild. Uh, so uh, I will speak about a, a work uh, which I've done mostly with colleagues and uh, also with uh, students, free students and free colleagues. And it's a, it's a new idea uh, to do MCMC to make to make sampling. And this paper will appear in uh, Today, so we are giving a presentation today at the Neural Information Processing NeurIPS conference. And if you are interested, the, the name of the paper is NEO for non equilibrium sampling on orbits of a deterministic transform. So that will be the outline of my talk. So I will briefly give an introduction and some motivation. Uh, then I will explain what is a NEO estimator, and then I will explain what is a NEO based, uh, what are the NEO based uh, samplers, because you can imagine different types of NEO based sampling. Okay, so as 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 well, I, I will present in, in very few slides basically the type of problem I'm interested in. So, which are it's not exclusive, but uh, this is mostly what I am working on right now. I have all the topics, but uh, most of my energy is, is is concentrated in what is called probabilistic machine learnings, and probabilistic machine learning is where I would say computer science meets uh, statistics. So, uh, so. Uh, as Merwan said, I've been educated as a speech processing guy, and I meet, uh, was uh, involved for almost 20 years in statistical signal processing, and gradually I moved towards uh, statistics and machine learning. And uh, But all the time I was uh, interested in, uh, about uh, probabilistic modeling. So when I was doing speech processing, it was a high days of hidden Markov models, and it's a probabilistic model. So, so I, I was always very convinced that uh, there is, a, there is a room and a good opportunity to meet uh, statistics and probability. Okay, so probability machine learning involves, of course, statistical models, and hence it involves also probability distributions. And uh, in many of these models, of course, the probability distribution is only known up to a normalizing constant. So what you know, you know, I will explain why, but what you don't know the, the, the integral of. So you, you know pi, the probability distribution, but not the normalizing constant. So application of many. So the first application on, on which I work on, but I will not detail that today, is Bayesian inference. And uh, one of the main goals of Bayesian inference is uncertainty quantification. There are also, of course, uh, Bayesian method to do model selection, integrating also uncertainty. So it is a bit different from the classical model selection methods. So that's the first uh, field of application, which maybe the more important, I would say. Uh, recently, there have been also a surge of interest uh, for sampling in, in probabilistic machine learning, which is uh, due to the appearance of what are called generative models, in particular variational autoencoders and generative adversarial networks, and also others like score matching methods. So there are many, many uh, generative models, and in all of these methods, you have at some point uh, you need to sample from complex distribution. And there are also other 
um, application, like for example, missing data. So it's uh, something which occurs very frequently when you are dealing with um, in data processing, there are misrecorded data or noisy data or data which are simply been, not been recorded because there was, for example, a central failure. And then you will, some, somehow you need to, to do processing, you need to impute such data or also latent variable models. So generative models are a kind of very specific, specific example of latent variable models. So in fact, there are three problems when you are willing to address uh, Bayesian inference, generative model and missing data is first the first problem is sampling from distribution and distribution which are in general reasonably complex okay this is for this is cr crucial for example in generative model so the second the second application the second uh, problem is to compute evidence so so evidence is uh, the bayesian name for uh, normalizing constant that i already mentioned and, and which is a name that is used in probability or the name which is used in statistical physics is free energy. And more generally, uh, what you need to do is co to compute integrals, okay, which is posterior mean typically from some uh, posterior distribution. <clears throat> so as I said, I will concentrate today for my, I will illustrate what I do today on generative models. So, so I will give briefly, very briefly describe uh, what our generative model and I, and I will start with a very, very simple model. In fact, we, because I will not, otherwise it will be another talk to, to introduce a generative model because there are many, many works in this direction. Of course, generative models are not new, but they have been, uh, they have been completely revolutionized by uh, what are called, by, by a work which has been done by uh, King Ma, now working in Google, and uh, Matt Swelling. Matt Swelling is an extremely productive uh, researcher working in Amsterdam. and. Uh, it was really a king thesis, and they describe what are called deep uh, latent Gaussian models. And deep latent Gaussian model works that follow. So what you have, you have Z, which is a latent space, okay, which you do, you do not observe. This is red, of course. And what you produce is X. X are, as the observation here, it's an image. And the way you produce this image is by doing the following thing. So you take a function F, okay, which is called a link function, some noise, okay, and you have G theta of Z, and G theta of Z is a way, it's a, in general uh, a, a, a network. It's a, it can be a ResNet typically, or it can be other uh, kind of transformer. I did not work with transformer, but I work with ResNet or, or flows in general, but they are in general deep uh, neural nets, okay, which depends upon synaptic weights of theta. He means here that you have synaptic weights. Okay, so so the idea is the following. So in order to generate image X, what you do is that you will, uh, it's a generative model, so you can generate it. So you will sample from a sub-distribution, but in the, the simplest model, it's a Gaussian distribution. Then you input the sample in, in, a, in, a, in neural nets. So here I did not, it's a kind of, a, it's an, an NN, but it can be a ResNet, for example. Okay, this gives you G theta Z, and then what you do, you add you add additional, you add some some additional randomness W, and then you take F, and and then you produce uh, X. Okay, so typically it's like uh, what is a DLGM for a binary image, but you sample Z from a Gaussian distribution. Okay, for uh, you compute G theta of Z, G theta of Z is uh, are the uh, success probability of Bernoulli distribution. Okay, and then you sample XG, the point, using another, another sampling because you sample the Bernoulli distribution independently conditional to a G theta of Z. So you have two uh, randomness errors. You have the randomness which give you, in fact, the success probability. So it's uh, the Z which is here. And then you have another randomness because you, when you sample, you sample from Bernoulli distribution with success probability with your G theta of Z. That, that's one of the many models that you can uh, imagine. Not, not the best one, of course. Okay, so if you go there, there was a huge literature out of this. So that's, that's an example of what is called style GAN, so the type of images that you can get. So it's a very good quality. So this has been produced by Turner in 2019. Basically, it's, a, it's, it's basically this type of model. It's slightly different, of course, because you are producing color images, and that it's basically this type of models. 
Okay, so what uh, what you do when we do a generative model? So you are trying, of course, to fit uh, the parameters of this uh, deep net, the deep net which is generating the, the images. And what you do, the, the method which has been used in general is to use maximum likelihood. So you have a data set with many, many images. Theta is a vector of synaptic weight. And what we will do is that you will maximize the likelihood. So you, mean you have a generative model. So you, you implicitly, you might define the likelihood function and you might define the likelihood of this observation, okay? But of course, if you look at this uh, model, it seems to be, of course, very, very natural, but it's, it's not so, it's so simple, because it's not so simple, why? Because the likelihood function itself is defined, the, the quantity which is easy to define is the joint distribution of X and the latent variable. This is always the case in latent variable models. And in fact, there are two quantities which are easy to define. The quantity which is easy to define the conditional distribution of X given Z, so the conditional distribution of the observation given the latent variable. And the second quantity, which is easy to define, is uh, the prior distribution, that's the distribution uh, of the latent variable. So you can compute easily the joint distribution of the uh, observation and the latent variable. And when you want to, to obtain the distribution of the observation alone, you need to marginalize the, this joint density with respect to uh, the latent variable Z. Okay, so, so basically when you do maximum likelihood, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's implicit in the sense that you cannot uh, really compute the likelihood because the likelihood function which you show which is shown here this likelihood function is in fact defined implicitly is intractable because it's a large dimensional integral so there is intractability which is one form of intractability there is no cross form expression for pt times okay and of course it's very complicated because the number of free parameters in the generative model are very large. So it's just theta is a, it's a very high dimensional vector. And of course, because the number of observation n, so the, type, the size of the data set is also very large. Okay, so there are two free problems. So you have, you need to integrate, you have many parameters and at the same time, you have also many training data. Okay, so what is the techniques which has been proposed initially? So there are many methods to do this. It's one method is to use a Fisher identity. So Fisher identity is a very, very old method which has been uh, developed by Fisher, which is a founding father of statistics. And the idea is the following. So which, when you compute the gradient of the log likelihood, uh, what you do is that you simply uh, uh, integrate, uh, compute the differential uh, be behind the integral sign. Then you compute the uh, derivatives of the, of the log likelihood. Okay, and you reintegrate this by, 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 with respect to p theta x, uh, z, and p theta x. And what you show here, it's it's funny, is that you, it's that's uh, it's very simple at the same time. It's a, it's a nice idea, is that the gradient of the incomplete likelihood is in fact the uh, gradient of the complete data likelihood, so which is a joint distribution of x and z. So that's nice because, as I said before, it's easy to compute. So that you integrate with respect to the distribution of z given x, okay? So the distribution of the latent variable given x, okay? And of course, basically what, if you want to, to do, for example, stochastic gradient, so what you will do typically is uh, to do maximum likelihood is that you will, uh, you will compute the, the gradient of uh, the, joint that, the joint distribution p theta x and z. So you will do your, your it's basically the same problem that uh, the, uh, so you will do basically the same, you, you will auto, Classical method because uh, remember that p theta x are simply uh, are simply uh, uh, ResNet, so it's uh, very simple. And then you need to in to, to integrate this uh, function with respect to the uh, uh, poster distribution of that given x. Okay, this is where you do n tips. Uh, okay, so this is the type of ideas I will try to. There are other methods to do that. Of course, you can do variational inference. Uh, there are many other methods. So, but let's focus on this type of method. Okay, that has been used also for um, energy-based models. So there are many, many models which are uh, so there are many models which where the problem can be settled like that. Okay, so if you if you if you want to do the general setting, so I will use a simpler notation. So imagine that I have a target distribution denoted pi on R D. So D is very large, as I said, and that is so this target distribution is defined as follows. So it's a product of the prior distribution. Uh, rho of x, rho is a prior, typically the simple distribution, say Gaussian, for example, to fix the ID, multiplied by the likelihood function, which is denoted by L of x. Okay, and you have z, big z, is an unknown normalizing constant. Okay, so in a Bayesian setting, typically uh, x would be the parameter in such case, L would be the likelihood, 
and rho is the prior distribution of the observation, and z is the evidence. Okay, when you apply that to generative model, L of y will be in that case py of z, so it will be the the, the, the posterior distribution of the observation given uh, the condition distribution of the observation given z. Rho will be the uh, the distribution of the latent variable, and z in that case is the the so normalizing constant in that case is uh, simply the likelihood of the observation. Okay, and as I said, we have three goals. So we might either want to sampling from pi. We want perhaps to co to compute z, okay? So some implication for this, for to do model selection, or for example, or you, we want to compute integral with respect to pi. Okay, so now I will introduce what is uh, our idea, which is called the neo estimator. So the idea is is, is really uh, linked in uh, in very basic uh, Monte Carlo method. So what 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 you do typically when you want to compute uh, z, like which is the integral of lx rho x dx with my notation, but there is a very simple, and if rho is of course a, a, a distribution which is easy to sample from, which is the case in fact in our models, uh, then the natural example, a natural uh, estimator for z is simply the naive Monte Carlo estimator, so which means what? Which means that you draw id a sample xi from the prior distribution rho, and then you compute the Monte Carlo average, which is n minus one, the sum from i equal one to n of z of xi. Okay, but what is very well known is that uh, this uh, estimator z dot is of course unbiased. So bias means what? It means that if you compute the expectation of z dot, the expectation of z dot is equal to z. Okay, so of course you can do it slightly better. One, one idea which has been proposed uh, many times is to use uh, 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 push forward. So, so one idea, so the method which has been proposed very often, and which is also a method which is which is uh, which is which has been which is which is used implicitly, for example, in uh, in uh, Hamiltonian uh, Monte Carlo techniques, is the following. So, what you do is that you define t, a distribution, uh, a, a transformation. So, it's a deterministic transform. And you assume that the deterministic transform leaves rho invariant, so which means that push forward of rho of the distribution rho by t, which I denote like that, the so push forward of the distribution rho by t is equal to rho. Okay, so which means that if you sample x according to rho, and if you compute t of x, then t of x will be also distributed according to rho. And if you take any sequence of weights, called for example omega k, then of course you you might form uh, you draw xi from rho, you compute uh, forward and backward orbit, uh, the forward and backward orbit, orbit of uh, this uh, transformation T, okay? Of course, because uh, TK of Xi will be, uh, TK of Xi as uh, T leaves rho invariant, so TK of Xi, which is a cap iterate of T, also uh, leaves uh, rho invariant, so which means that if you compute uh, this double sum, this is also a, an unbiased estimator of Z, okay? And what is easy to show? It's a two-line proof is that this estimator has a smaller variance than the naive MC Monte Carlo estimator. In fact, what happened is that Neo uh, 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 somehow generalized this construction, okay? But it generalized this construction with a transformation T, which does not leave pi or rho invariant, okay? This is why we, uh, it's, it's an idea which comes from computational physics, and this is why uh, this, uh, this is because of, because T does not leave pi or rho invariant. This is why we use this uh, name non-equilibrium. Okay, so what is the construction for this non-equilibrium non estimator? So you start from any, uh, say, would say, smooth transform from Rd to Rd. So if you take a C1 deformorphism, okay? And what we will, what we define is rho k. Rho k is a push forward of uh, the initial distribution rho by the TK. So uh, assuming that rho has a density with respect to Rd, of course rho k is the push forward of rho by TK also has uh, uh, a density, and this density is written as follows. So it could be rho evaluated at t minus kx, and you have to multiply with the determinant of the Jacobian of t minus k. So t minus k means that you go backward in time, okay? And this defines rho k. That, uh, that the distribution basically, if you, you 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 take x from rho, then you apply t k times. That the distribution of uh, the particle, a particle sample from rho, and uh, on which you have applied t k times. 
Okay, so, so this defines this. Okay, and for any probability mass function, so which means weights which are positives, omega k which are positive and which sums to one, you might define rho t of x as a weighted sum of the, this push forward distribution. And then what we will do typically is that we will do the same, exactly the same identity which is used in uh, important sampling. So what we will do is that we will uh, compute the integral of f of ox dx as follows. So we say that the integral of f, f of x, so you, it's rho x divided by rho t of x multiplied by rho t of x. Okay. And what you will do there is the following thing is that now you expand so that important sampling identity, as I said, you expand rho t of x. So you just plug in this expression, you plug uh, this expression here. Okay. So, and then you obtain a sum. And then what you do there is, of course, what you see, and this is because you have this very special, you have this very special, uh, rho k is very special because it's a push forward of rho by tk. So if you integrate, if you compute the integral now of f of x, rho divided by rho t of x according to rho k of x, you can, this, this function, will, it will be f of tk of x, okay, multiplied by some weights, which you may call, what you might call, but it's a bit dangerous, but you might call them important weights. And this important weight may be computed as follows. So it's very simple proof, so we not go into this level of details. But it's easy to understand. It's basically it's written there, so it just then you need to, to be convinced. So you retake the expression here, and you have to be convinced that you obtain exactly this result. But which means that there is a way. So it's it's funny if you look. It's uh, it's funny. It's more or less funny. It's a bit funny, I would say. If you look at this uh, two identity, you have f of x rho x dx, and now you you simply it's you integrate according to rho x, but this time you integrate according to rho x. This uh, a function which is integrated against along a path of uh, uh, non-deterministic uh, of a uh, bundle transform. It's exactly, in fact, if you look at if t is uh, if t is uh, reversible, uh, if t is uh, left if two invariant, of course you retrieve exactly the estimators that we had before because in that case all the roquet are equal and 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 then because all the roquet are equal in such case the the, the way the w, w k of x does not depend is simply equal to omega k. Because the, uh, the numerator and the denominator simplifies. Okay, so it's nice. It's a so you, which means that you can more or less uh, use the same tricks uh, in order to obtain uh, a better uh, better uh, estimate for the uh, for the um, for the uh, function for the uh, this normalizing constant. Okay. So this can be cast. It is linked with something which is very. In fact, it's it's very well known, and especially it's it's, it's very well known in in, in, much in vision. They use a lot of this for vision, which is called multiple important sampling. So multiple important sampling is a bit different. It's just what we, you can see what we do as a kind of very special case of multiple important sampling. Multiple important sampling aims at combining a different important sampling estimator for the normalizing constant. So you use different. Uh, uh, you, you instead of uh, using one instrumental distribution, you use several instrumental distribution, and then you reweight all these estimator in order to obtain one single estimator. Okay. If if we now apply this identity to uh, f f of x, and if we simply now use this identity, so we you, 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 we take this identity, we uh, sample now x i according to rho, we plug this sample. Xi in this uh, formula, and you obtain uh, what is called the new uh, estimator of the uh, normalizing constant, okay, and which is computed along, in fact, the backward and forward orbit of uh, tr the transform T. And what you have to do, you have to, to, to compute this quantity and compute the uh, corresponding weights. And something which is uh, nice, in somehow, is that the expectation of this normalizing constant is exactly equal to z because of this of this identity so because you have this uh, important sampling identity of course the expectation of z at n omega is exactly equal to z okay so what is the neo estimator of the normalizing constant just to recap what you do is that you uh, uh, sample uh, x1 xn according to rho you compute the path, the forward and backward orbits of xi according to this transform t. You compute the weights, so the weights are very very simple expression with respect to the orbits, and then you 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 just uh, 
put uh, insert this uh, it, uh, normally forget k equals zero so is, if we do that only on the forward orbit but it, it does not make sense you can use backward and forward in fact it's somewhat better to use backward and forward and then you obtain a, a best estimator of uh, okay so in fact it's uh, we, we we get this idea uh, we keep this we kept this idea from a, a paper which has been written by uh, uh, Gary Rotskoff, who was a PhD student of Eric van den Eschden. So Eric van den Eschden is very famous in computational physics. And their method is called dynamical computation of the density of states and base factor using non equilibrium important sampling. Okay, but the, the argument which is used in this paper, if you have the curiosity to read it, is very different. So it's commented in our new paper. They use continuous time argument and uh, and of course, I think it's less transparent. And uh, somehow, they, the, the way they construct their estimators, they, I think they, they miss. Uh, so they, there is some kind of approximation in their estimator when they go from continuous time to, to discrete time. And you can avoid uh, by working like we do uh, this, this type of errors. OK, so of course, uh, once you have that, uh, once you have this estimator of the of, of this esti of uh, normalizing constant, you, 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 you might start to consider different estimator of more general function. One of these estimator is based on what is called self normalized important sampling. So what is self normalizing important sampling? What you do is that but you will use this time uh, the, uh, this, the distribution and uh, it's basically the same type of ideas. So, so you use uh, you, you take pi as I explained, which is uh, rho of x, uh, l of x. You apply exactly the same ideas that I applied before. So you insert a rho t, and uh, same techniques, and you use the same ideas. And from the uh, that's for so you, you you plug simply this uh, this estimator in 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 this uh, our k key identity, and you might obtain like that. Uh, uh, an estimator of any of this integral, okay? This is called G neo. That's one which is self normalized important sampling estimator. Uh, okay, always the same type of quantity. What you, the quantity which appears are the following. So it's a normalizing constant that we have computed before. Then you have a normalizing constant along each trajectory, which is written there, okay? And then uh, what you do along each trajectory, you have to compute G. Uh, at this iterate xk of pi, okay, and you have to reweight it with, with this quantity, okay, so it's a it's of kind of normalizing weight written there, and then you have a weight, so now that, that, that for example, that, that, sorry, that, uh, this quantity is, uh, this quantity is a computation along one trajectory, and then you have to weight all this trajectory with this relative uh, importance weight, okay. So you have to be uh, a bit careful there because this estimator is biased. Okay, it's no longer unbiased because you have the division here by random term. So before it was so the estimator of Z hat is not biased, but this estimator is biased. Okay, but uh, it's not easy to it's not difficult to show that uh, you have a, a good estimate from the bias. So it's a, it's already an interesting estimator. So if you assume an, under standard assumption, if you assume that uh, this, the relative importance weight, so this uh, z, which is a normalizing weight along one trajectory. So if you assume that this weight is bounded, and if you assume that the variance of this weight is bounded, so always the weights which are along one trajectory. So you have a question there. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, okay, I will answer to Renato Melo. Uh, yes, it's, uh, of course, uh, the question was, uh, of course, there are in, in, we, we have to truncate. Yeah, yes, of course, we have to truncate. Yeah, we have to truncate. So we, of course, you have an infinite sum. So we truncate typically the sum. So it's kind of hyperparameters. So how many terms you take uh, along each orbit? So it's uh, perfectly true. Doesn't change the thing. So you, you put, uh, in fact, the number of non-zero weights, are, are, the number of non-zero weights are, 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 are bounded. Okay. Uh, okay, so what you can do is that you can estimate both the bias and the variance of this estimator and the bias of the variance of this estimator using uh, very, very classical results can be bounded, may be shown to be inversely proportional to uh, the number n, which is the number of trajectories that uh, you compute, okay? And also you have large probability bounds, uh, which comes basically from the same type of ideas. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the first type of result. Okay, so we have uh, we have a good estimator, and 
Um, we know that basically, so if you look at this quantity, so uh, the quantity, uh, all the, both the bias and the variance depends on, on one quantity, and this quantity basically is a chi-square is a chi-square divergence between pi and rho t. So, so basically, if you want to have a very good estimator, you should uh, choose a transform uh, t in such a way that rho t becomes close to pi uh, uh, in terms of this uh, in terms of this uh, uh, chi square divergence okay so what are the desired properties so first t should be should drive the sample from rho to the set where log pi is right large this is which is with guarantees that this chi square is is good okay and of course there is a second requirement if you look at what we did before is that the Jacobian of the transform T should be easy to compute because we have to compute the determinant of the Jacobian for T and all of its iterates. So, so of course, it's very important that the Jacobian, the, deter, the determinant of the Jacobian of T is easy to compute. Okay. So there are uh, there are many. So there are two options that we have uh, considered. So the first option is of course to to make T itself. A normalizing flow, and there have been a lot of tons of results in this direction. So we, we but uh, this is very, I think it's a very promising idea. So it's uh, one of the uh, oldest ideas uh, I've seen in uh, in PMN in privacy machine learning in the recent years. So the idea of learning this transform, but of course, uh, using normalizing flow introduces further complexity. So what we decide to do, in fact, is instead of using normalizing flow. We use, in fact, a transform, which is a conformal Hamiltonian transform. So I will explain. What is conformal Hamiltonian system? So, so you start, so here x would be something like, uh, you, you will extend the state space. Of course, you extend the state space exactly like in Hamiltonian systems. So of course, your, your target distribution, uq, we, it's also by, by extension, what does it mean? It means that instead of sampling pi, you will sample a, a distribution which is for which pi is already uh, is uh, it's a marginal, so you will you will extend the space, uh, but in very sim simple way. So 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 the the, the 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 part which is of interest to you is is called the potential potential energy U Q. It's minus log of the likelihood times the prior. Okay, and you if you are willing to get some physical intuition, your Q is the position of the particle. And then you, you add, in fact, uh, an, uh, an, ex an external variable, uh, P there is the momentum of the particle, and you assume that P as a kinetic is distributed according to a Gaussian distribution, so which means that uh, Kp is as a kinetic energy, so the kinetic energy is, is, is this quantum form, where M, so P is a momentum, okay, and M is a mass matrix, which is a, some, somehow is a positive definite matrix, okay, and you define like in physics, you define the Hamiltonian uh, function as a sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy. Of course, you can use different forms of kinetic energy. So that's a classical form of kinetic energy, which gives you uh, uh, the that you can use uh, relativistic kinetic energy. So there are many, many other options which can which can be considered. So what, what is a conformal Hamiltonian? So this defined Hamiltonian. What is a conformal Hamiltonian uh, system? So it's conformal Hamiltonian system. Is so you start with a Hamiltonian equation. So if you start with a Hamiltonian equation, you forget about this gamma pt. Okay, that's Hamiltonian system. If you're an Hamiltonian system, the Hamiltonian is preserved along uh, each trajectory. Okay, but uh, if it is conformal, so what you do there is that you add some kind of friction term. Okay, so you have a kind of friction term. So you, you, on the derivative of PT, PT is, uh, is the, uh, remember PT is, uh, is a momentum. So the derivative with respect to time of PT is minus the derivative, the gradient of the Hamiltonian with respect to Q, with respect to the position, and you add a friction term, which is proportional to uh, PT. Uh, so which means that the Hamiltonian, it's, it's exactly like a Hamiltonian system, but you have here a distribution term, okay? Because you have this distribution term, the Hamiltonian is no longer constant, okay, but the Hamiltonian decreases, and it decreases exactly according to this term. So it's gamma times, okay, if gamma is a damping constant, so it's, if gamma is a, is, a, is a damping constant, so it's gamma time the, uh, the uh, kinetic energy. Okay, so you decrease uh, uh, proportionally to the kinetic energy. And if you look at what are the fixed points, so because it's a conservative system, so of course, uh, on the long run, 
uh, your system would converge. And what are the fixed points for this uh, system? The fixed points for the system are on point Q star and P star. When the momentum is zero, so which means that at the end of the day, your trajectory will have zero momentum, so she will not move, uh, but it, it will not move provided that you reach uh, a point where the potential has a local, uh, it's a local extrema, in general, it's a local minima. So what, what that, uh, if you look at this, this is an Hamiltonian field. So Hamiltonian field, remember that the Hamiltonian field is constant. So if it's a, here it's a quadratic potential. So U is also quadratic. In that case, the, tra the Hamiltonian trajectory are circle. You add a dissipation field, and then you have the conformal fig. And the conformal formal fig uh, will uh, make spiral like that and will converge to uh, zero. Okay. <laughs> of course, this is continuous time dynamics, but uh, uh, you might discretize it. So there are many, many nice uh, ways to discretize this uh, quantity. One of, the, of, of such ways is uh, Euler uh, symplectic integrator. So it's uh, it's not the best one. Of course, you might, you might use much better uh, uh, you might use much better integrator for a Newtonian system. But uh, we we do our other experiment with this uh, Euler discretization, which is which is easy to implement. What what you can prove then also is that T uh, if you proceed like that T uh, the Jacobian the determinant of the Jacobian of T in, is completely easy to compute it's exponential minus H gamma D okay so which means that you have uh, the Jacobian decrease along the trajectory okay that that gives you typically uh, uh, example of Hamiltonian trajectory so so uh, so that's a potential. So potential is uh, here in that case, we are in R2, I think, if I remember well. We have, uh, it's a potential of uh, a mixture of four Gaussian distribution, okay, which are more or less spread apart. These are typically uh, Hamiltonian uh, trajectory, okay, you will see that this Hamiltonian, so here is this uh, trajectory or by so around this point is the potential, okay, and these are uh, conformal Hamiltonian system with different value for gamma. So it's uh, so it depends on the damping factor. Of course, if the damping factor is very is very is very strong, in such case your trajectory will will go very quickly to uh, a, a minimum. Okay. Of course, if gamma is close to zero, you are looking more like uh, what is an Hamiltonian trajectory. Okay. So now, now we provide you some examples, which are the examples which are currently used in uh, probabilistic machine learning. So it's a very typical benchmarks, uh, which are which are not easy, by the way. So even if they, are, it seems, they seem to be trivial, but they are not easy. The first one is uh, what is called a mixture of 25 Gaussians. They are most more 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 complicated one, but this one is already complicated. So which what, what you look at is you look at the mixture of Gaussians, so mixture of Gaussians which are on regular grid, okay, and uh, with uh, diagonal uh, terms, uh, so that's the grid, so 25 mixture, and then you have a grid which which makes that the two components of this Gaussian are very small, the first two ones, so we, and this is the projection of the first two ones, which means that the modes are quite well separated. The other is the funnel distribution. Final distribution is also a, it's a benchmark which has been proposed a long time ago by Neil, and it's considered as one of the more difficult distribution in the world because it's uh, it's extremely inhomogeneous in terms of scale. So there is no typical scale there so because of this term. Okay, so it means that uh, depending upon the value of x1, you have massively you have so this term blows up, and since this term blows up, of course you have the geometry of the of the likelihood is very very special. And in, in each case, of course, we assume we take a proposal, which is simply a Gaussian distribution. And these are uh, our estimator of the normalizing constant for different value of D, okay? Uh, that's NEO, okay? For, uh, uh, it's a, here it's depending on the dimension. So it's here dimension 10, 20, 14. And this is for MG, uh, mixture of 25 Gaussian, this is for the uh, um, this is for fun for the funnel distribution and you see that our method do very well okay compare especially to uh, the classical method which are for example the neural so this method is called neural important sampling neural important sampling which has been advocated in 2018 by uh, very famous people fails completely in this distribution we use their code 
The other method, which is more from uh, statistics and which is called annealed important sampling, also a proposal by Radford Neal, do well in small dimension, but does not do well in our dimension, okay? Uh, of course, IS is also, uh, it's also plugged in by dimension. And if you look at our estimator, neo estimator, without, I would say, excessive fine tuning, uh, with a bit of fine tuning, it works well in all of these three examples, okay? So it seems to be promising. Okay, so which means that we have a new method uh, to compute a normalizing constant. This new method can be plugged in kind of uh, self-normalized important estimator. And we have a proposal which seems to be sensible, which is to propose according to this uh, conformal Hamiltonian systems. And you have already a good estimator. Well, now we, what we do to conclude my talk, I will show that this method can be also used to design a sampler. Okay, so in this last part of my talk, I want to use this method to uh, to sample from pi, and what we will do is that we will uh, adapt uh, what is called a sampling importance resampling, and what is called the iterative sampling importance resampling to uh, neo uh, estimators. Okay, so what is the sampling importance the sampling importance resampling method? So it's a very old technique. So one of the oldest technique in uh, in uh, in uh, sampling, of course, which has been proposed uh, in the 80s by uh, people uh, which have done multiple important sampling is uh, Don Donald Rubin, so which did that for for uh, missing data. So it's a big name. Donald Rubin was very active in missing data in the in the 17 in the 18, and it was a pre Monte Markov chain Monte Carlo's day. So it was a time where computing power was not large and uh, Sampling importance resampling was considered as the best technique in that time, so end of 80s. What you draw, you draw uh, x1, xn according to some distribution rho, which is called the importance distribution. And then what you do is that you compute L tilde of xi. L tilde of xi is simply you compute the likelihood uh, L for each of these particles. You renormalize, so you have weights. Of course, these weights sum to one, and you pick a point. Uh, according to this distribution. So, okay, you do two things. So, you draw, you draw in general a massive number of points. Big N is large in the Rubin IDs, okay, according to L. Then you compute for each of these points, you compute L of Xi. Then you compute the renormalized weight. So, that gives you weights. You, uh, and then you resample. This is why you have a resampling. You're sampling a second time. You, sam you sample now an index, I star to form X star, okay? And when you can prove, it's a very easy proof, is that when N goes to infinity, you can prove that the distribution of X star converges weakly to the target distribution pi. Of course, it seems to be a miracle. It's uh, not a miracle, of course. And uh, why it's not a miracle? It, because uh, when the number N of proposal, uh, uh, when the dimension is large, of course, the number of proposal can be shown to be, uh, to be required to grow exponentially uh, with a dimension d uh, to maintain a given accuracy. Okay, so so uh, several years later, so I would say in the in the 2005, 2004, 2005, there are two authors which have proposed the method uh, to use this type of idea, but to do sampling. Uh, and this method is called iterated uh, sampling importance resampling. So the, the, there are two, in fact, uh, contributors. One which is who is Chelman, Chelman, which is a Norway people from Norway, so a professor in Norway, <coughs> and the other is more well known. It's Arnaud Doucet and Christophe Andrieu, and in particular, it's uh, it's uh, <coughs> the method they are proposed is um, <coughs> iterated here might be seen as a kind of um, method which is related to what is called uh, particle Gibbs method. So it's it's really related to um, Particle Gibbs, I, I think that uh, it's clear that in the, when you read the paper on Particle Gibbs, uh, Doucet got this idea of Particle Gibbs and, and Andrieu got this idea of Particle Gibbs from this uh, iterated sear technique. What is iterated sear? What you do is the following. So, in, so it's iterative this time, so you add the name. And you do basically a sear method, okay? So at each iteration, you do sear. So you, you, but you condition according to one particle. So you, you keep one particle, so yn. You put this particle in position one, okay? Then you draw x to n uh, according to the distribution rho, okay? So you, you do that ID. You, you, have, you, you have different techniques to, to construct proposal, but 
Okay, let's start with ID. Then you do exactly as before. So you compute the uh, importance weight, the renormalized importance weight. So, so this has M tilde, okay? And then you pick one point uh, according to this weight. This gives you the next iterate, okay? Yn plus one that you push, put in position Yn, and you iterate. And what can be proved, and it's not very difficult, so there are many, many different proofs of that, uh, is that if you iterate this process, you will converge to the target distribution pi, and the proof is also two line. In fact, it suffices to show that it's a, it's a, a partially collapsed uh, Gibbs sampler on a distribution, uh, on a joint distribution of the particle x1, xn, the uh, i n and z, and z, which is here uh, y. Okay, so this is this is uh, the extended target distribution, and we see that all these all these uh, steps can be shown as a, a kind of uh, the, the, the the move of the collapse sampler. That that the technique, which is the technique, the proof is this proof is due to Gentman. In fact, there is also a direct proof, which is in our paper we use a direct proof of that. It's it's not very difficult. Okay, so so because we have this, we we can uh, we can define the new framework. It's simply what you do is that you you you, you look at the structure of our uh, new estimator, so which is important sampling estimator, self normalized important sampling estimator, and you you do you put a, a SEER uh, technique uh, uh, on the top of that. Okay, so what you do is. Uh, you, you draw a trajectory, okay, uh, and you compute uh, the associated backward and forward orbit, okay. For each of these uh, forward and backward orbits, you compute zt omega of xi, okay, and then you sample uh, the orbit according to this importance weight. So zt of xi are the, the weights along the trajectory, okay. So that gives you a new iterate, so it's a kind of azir. You keep this trajectory, you put it in, in, in position one, and you keep. Okay, so it's exactly like in Isir. And then what you draw, once you have kept uh, this uh, trajectory, you pick a point, because you are interested next, you are not interested in a trajectory, you pick a point along this trajectory, okay, I, uh, according to this weight. Okay, so there are two, two things to do. Uh, you first uh, have, a, you do iterated SEER on the uh, trajectories, okay, and then every time you pick a point, when you want to sample a point, you pick a point, Along the trajectory with respect to the index k. Okay. And then what you can prove is that if you take, if you output u is xki, and if you go on the long run, uh, you will obtain uh, the new estimator. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. So what, what are the steps? Step one, you update the conditioning uh, trajectory. Okay. This is defined here. Okay. So update condition trajectory, you put the trajectory yn that you have kept in, in, in position one, then you sample the other trajectory according to rho, then you sample the orbit index according to this, uh, the weights of each of these trajectory, then give you a new trajectory. And once you have chosen this new trajectory, you compute, uh, you sample one point according to these weights, okay, and the, out, the final output of the algorithm is un plus one, which is uh, the index, okay, kn, the, the point that you have chosen along your trajectory for the trajectory which has been uh, uh, observed, okay? So you have statistical guarantees, are we not, uh, so you can write, of course, it's a Markov chain, you can write exactly what is uh, the transition probability of this Markov chain. So it's a little bit uh, frightening, but it's not. And then once you have this, you, you might find also what is a conditional distribution of uh, the points that you pick according to this, uh, the trajectory that you have kept. It's also a Markov kernel, which is defined by this. Okay. And these two kernels define exactly defined. So you have two kernels. There is a kernel which which is a kernel that you use to update uh, the trajectory uh, on which you are conditioning. And there is one kernel which uh, gives you the way to select one point along trajectories. Uh, okay, so what you can see is that you, 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 okay, so there are some details to fill. Okay, so you have to identify things. Okay, so that we, I don't, uh, so what, what the important thing is that you can prove that you are converging to pi in total variation that you have for any bounded function that you converge almost surely, so it's a, it's a good result. And also what you have, you have uh, uh, 
uh, you might show uh, that uh, does the assuming that uh, kind of dominance uh, property uh, you might show that you converge exponentially fast to pi so in, and 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 the thing which is nice if you look at that is that uh, if mt omega of course is uh, it's so nt omega is a quantity which has been given there, so it's given in this part. So nt omega is the supremum of the, the weight of each trajectory divided by z. Okay, so if this quantity is bounded, then what you might show is that uh, you are converging exponentially fast. And if n is large, we see that the convergence, if n is of order, say, empty or larger, larger you might think that this quantity, in fact, can be extremely close to uh, one, in fact. So it means that the the rate at which you converge can be extremely fast, provided that n is large. This gives you an example. So once again, our favorite uh, mixture of Gaussian example, dimension 40, so as I said, it's already difficult. And we compare NEO uh, with ISIR, so it's a version of ISIR, which is called correlated ISIR, so it's a better version than the classical ISIR. The, the, the pyro no U-turn sampler, okay? and uh, our est neo estimator and we do that with the same clock time okay so we, we fix the clock time and we compute the sample you will see that i0 of course is completely stuck in one mode so there are good reason for that no way to escape in fact it's very difficult once you have find a point which is good you stay there forever uh, nuts uh, even if people pretend that nuts is uh, i would say uh, non-local proposal in fact it doesn't work very well in such a for example so it, it's it's for for nuts it's a nightmare in this distribution because you have well separated uh modes so it's uh, very difficult to sample from this distribution with nuts nuts has a tendency to be stuck in one of these modes whereas ISIR is do is doing perfectly well okay and to finish i will present you some example of in painting okay uh to illustrate the mixing time a challenge so we we in order to um to um to do that what we what we use we use the vie so version auto encoder which has been trained on the celeb data set so 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 it's celeba uh, data set we use a vie so we use a standard vie encoder one of the state of the art encoder of course and and we learn that with uh, our uh, favorite uh, VIE estimator. So we start with uh, classical VIE estimator and we refine according to the estimator to the procedure I, I've seen. Uh, okay, I mean sorry. Uh, and then what what you have to do is that we uh, we use a two stage uh, GIP sampler. So we we first sample Z. Uh, given yt and yb and then we sample so 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 what is an impainting problem so you keep some pixel of the image okay and you destroy the bottom pixel so we keep in our example we pick we keep the the, the upper pixel of the image and we kill the bottom pixel so it's an impainting technique where we re we remove 60 percent or 70 percent of the bottom pixel and to retrieve this pixel what we do is that we use a two-stage sampler using a vie uh, which is celeba okay so we sample z given yt and yb this is of course we know how to do that then we sample the bottom uh the bottom i don't know so we, I, will, I will tell sorry sorry there is uh, uh we 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 sample pt star star uh, uh, yb given z and yt and 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 of course if you look at this so you sample according to z and yt and uh, because of the conditioning, so it's simply pt star of yb given z. So you, you, of course, when you 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 you, you alternate the two things, and you, you this is exactly the inpainting technique. So so what you do, you, you sample z, you sample z, which is uh, the latent variable given the whole image. Okay, but in fact, yt is observed, and yb you need to come to construct them. So that's the first uh, st first stage of the Gibbs sampler. Second stage of the Gibbs sampler, you sample. YB, which is a bottom uh, pixel, which has been destroyed, conditional to Z and YT, and this is uh, the second stage. So the stage one is completely elementary. Stage two requires uh, an MCMC, and we compare ISIR, new MCMC, and HMC, uh, and also we, we do that with the same cl uh, clock time. And this this gives you the, some example. Okay, so that gives you some example of in painting, and uh, okay, so, so 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 from top to bottom you have. Uh, uh, Azir, which is mixing, so we keep here, so you see the condition in particular, so it's uh, the top pixel are not changed, and this is, uh, the, we take 
the pixel every each iteration of the chain. So we see that that for is here, it's not very good. This is HMC, and this is our uh, proposal. Of course, uh, it's not perfect, but it's uh, much, much better. And in particular, if you see, there are much more varieties than in the other images. So we have many, many, many examples if you are willing to look at our noise paper. And this is funny that uh, it's, uh, it's what happened along the trajectory. So it's, uh, if you look, this is the trajectory of NEO. So it's uh, the trajectory that has been picked. So it's all the images which have been, uh, which have, which are proposed uh, along uh, conform a Hamiltonian uh, method. Okay, that's another example of Gibbs. Uh, that's another example of Gibbs uh, where we take another image and you see different way to complete this image to resample this image. Of course, it's extreme there because we keep only a, uh, a very small number of points in order to illustrate that we are doing better than others. Of course, it's a very difficult to give something. Okay. Okay. And I finish there. Sorry, I've been a little bit long and uh, I hope it. Uh, so it's also there are many other things. It's, it works. Uh, I am. Uh, it's really state of the art. I would say it's. Uh, it's, uh, I am very proud of Neo because it, it solves the problem. In particular, it's extremely good when you have multimodal distribution. Thanks for your attention. Thank, thank you, Eric, and thank you for the time you spent. I know that uh, you have also some, some uh, people pinging you right now. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, that you know, so that you know. Th that I know, yeah, I saw Francois. <laughs>